Welcome back to a new episode of It Takes Two, episode 23. Um, we are excited for today's episode. We've been getting together for coffee dates and just talking about mm -hmm. different topics that we thought would really bless you guys, things that we get asked a lot. Um, and so today we're going to say three things to do when you're stuck in a dull season. Um, but we have an opening segment that we're excited about. If you guys um, don't already, make sure that you guys follow, like, and subscribe. Leave a five-star review. We really would love to hear from you guys on um, what you love about the podcast. But in reference to reviews, we have a new fun segment today. Yeah. Well, that was a great intro. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> um, that was our first first take, too. Um, was and it? Yeah, it was. What? My no. first time, like, opening? No, no, like that was our first take. Like it was like a one take wonder thing. We don't ever. No, I know, but it's worth anyway. mentioning. It was good. That oh, was good. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're going to be doing a segment called Social Media Minute. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like it kind of started with uh, when I was doing social media stuff and posting reels. And people are just, you know, I always say people are always the bravest on social media. You know, no profile. Yeah. It's always the people with no profile picture and. Everything's like that. So we thought it'd be a fun segment to like just take some comments that people have been posting on our reels on Instagram and uh, review them. Yeah, I, we just laugh sometimes when we see like, you know, people sharing their funny stories or even just like good points people have to say. And I think it would just be fun, fun to hear from our two crew. So, um, yeah. Do you want to read? <laughs> I feel like whenever you see a good post or a yeah. good reel everyone runs to the comment section because they're like, oh, this has got to be good, you know? Well, it's either that or like, you know, there's sometimes reels are, are so viewed because because of their comments, you know, yeah. like people just get roasted in the comments sometimes. So, yeah. so we, we, we pick some of our top favorites of what we've seen. Yeah. So the first one, uh, somebody said, we should have put their username, but somebody said, I'm kind of curious how that went over with Roger, I, that Roger being Adrian's dad. I could see him being dad that tells him to get a job or get out, LOL. I think we were, that was the episode and I was talking about being a sugar mama at one point and like, <laughs> yeah, we want the guy to be the provider, like to have a job and okay. like, things like that. We talked about this a few times. Yes, but. but like when we made the joke about it, it wasn't that I didn't have a job. It was that I was starting something new and because of that, I was- No, I wasn't talking about you in my story. I was talking about an old relationship. Oh, okay, okay. We should have posted what video this came from. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. How did that go? That's, this is obviously has nothing to do with me now. So how did it go over? With well, I feel like thinking back to it, like my parents were really nice and the person was fine. Um, I don't think they knew the extent of all of his problems, though. Like I really you know, sheltered him from mm, that. Don't do that. Um, but even without knowing all of his like issues. Yeah. Um, I don't think anyone like preferred to spend time with us if we were together. And it just was like, we would tell these jokes about how like, if we all wanted to like ride somewhere, like we're going to dinner or we're, we all went on like a family, like weekend getaway. Um, people would all race to be in a certain car so they didn't have to like ride with us because mm. they didn't really not that like they, they didn't like him they just didn't get along with him it just was, they didn't like you they know, didn't like they him, didn't like him and so listen it's okay in life to not like people sometimes but you know what i'd always be like like what is it about him like if you just tell me i'll listen because i've learned my lesson if you don't like the boyfriend i'm not going to be with him and they're like i just can't tell you what it is i don't know but there's just something about him and i'm like okay i'm not gonna go just like on your gut feeling but i'll take your advice if it's like substantiated i told you but yeah, it ended up being true. Obviously, I'm not with him anymore, and everyone's yeah. obsessed with Spencer. Everyone wants to hang out with Spencer and I, and I. It's so refreshing. If you have, if you like, have to hide characteristics of somebody that you're dating from your friends and family, then maybe you should be like, man, should I really be dating this person? You know? Yeah. Like, if you're not proud of characteristics, then figure out why you're with the person. It's that simple. I was open though to like feedback and advice. But yeah. anyways, that's that's my parents didn't really know. If they would have known, uh, I don't think they would have been very happy. <laughs> All right, what's the next comment? The next one, um, we talked about dating apps. Are they okay? What do we think about them in a Christian aspect? Mm -hmm. 
And this was actually a really cool story. Someone wrote in, met a guy on a Christian dating app, both after having previously very unsuccessful dates via the same app. Turns out we'd lived 20 minutes away from each other for the past six years. I always joked about wanting to marry an Oklahoma farm boy. He lived on his family's cattle farm. Anyway, next month is our first wedding anniversary, and now we live on that cattle farm together. So I thought... Just a perfect farm we love, couple. We love a good success story. Yeah. Well, and that, honestly, that's... I mean, let's talk about the power of online dating. Mm-hmm. Of, I don't you, know if this is like Christian Mingle, or I don't know if you guys have heard of Upward. That's like a Christian dating app. Yeah, we don't know what... We, we can't verify or sponsor any dating apps from this, because we don't know which one it is. But, I mean, they live 20 minutes away. Like, there's hundreds of thousands of people that live we in the same city. We should have known each other in the circles we grew up with, but we never did. Exactly. Went and to was, the same school. Yeah, went to the same school growing up. So... Um, that's great. We love that. And that was our take on dating when we talked about it. Uh, why not try it? Yeah. Um, okay. What's the next one? <laughs> this is, I'm glad oh, you're this, is this one. one. <laughs> he, this is about me. <laughs> he says, I love that the kid talking about marriage doesn't look 15. Let God lead you and you will never be lost. What are we doing? What what kind of first of all, Spencer first of all, always no. gets trolled for his age because everyone thinks he's literally like 13 years old. Really? He's 29. People do not think I'm 13 years old. Well, not anymore. Um, There was a time. There was a time. But, okay, my number one pet peeve with people like this, we'll call them Christian Karens, is like if you're going to be rude or if you're going to give an insult, if you're going to insult somebody, just do it. No need to no need to try and cover yourself with God by saying, let God lead you and you will never be lost at the like, end. Like, what of are it. you, fifteen? But God bless you. They're like oh, Yeah. No, it's no, a no. diss, but you're also like, that's no, not do a that. great representation. Just, <laughs> just own the insult. But um I do get this often. Uh yeah. People think that I'm young. Um, but the fact of the matter is I am well, I am young, twenty nine years, still in my twenties, but we've been married. He's really holding on to that and his birthday's in September, but we've been married eight years. Yeah. Dating for 10. And that gives me a license to say things about marriage. Yeah. And you're a really great husband. Thank you. You're a really great wife. All right. Next comment. Received. Okay. The last um, one we're going to read is we've talked about like, um, like if someone approaches you and I think it's like how to be honest about like the way you feel, if you are interested or not, whatever, how to let someone down. And someone said, I would much rather be rejected in one of two ways. Face to face or an imaginary scenario I create in my head. <laughs> uh, what's the third option? No, in one of two ways, either face to face or in my imagination. Like, but I know, but like, how else are you getting rejected? I don't know, but I Maybe just like laugh because someone's text. like, I've thought about this. Like, you're expecting to be rejected. We all, I mean, we all go through this scenario, imaginary scenarios in our head, our shower thoughts. Shower thoughts, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but I would rather be rejected face to face because at least you have a good answer. At least you know, it's definitive. It's not enough definitive things. It's like ah, it's so awkward. I like you know, you're a good person. friend and all of that, all of that junk and stuff. Like just to say, hey, I am not interested in, in you. I don't find you attractive. Yikes! This will never happen. You know, but yeah. no, I mean, you know, fluff it up, make it a little bit nicer. But let the intention be known. It's better for everybody. Okay. Yeah. So thank you guys for sharing your comments, whether saucy or just fun or inspiring. We love hearing from you guys. And so we thought that would be a fun social media minute. Um, We'll continue to do that when we're on our podcast as we do opening segments. So make sure you guys are commenting on the reels um, on our posts because we want to hear from you. Yeah. And so, you know, this episode we wanted to talk about, Three things to do when you're in a dull season, because um, I think that dull, everybody knows kind of that verbiage um, and that idea, but I think anybody can get in a dull season where it, it feels like lackluster and it feels monotonous and it feels like a chore. And um, I think that's just the nature of our humanity and in relationships that sometimes it just gets in what like the best word for it is dull season. Mm hmm. Yeah, sometimes you can just feel like life is happening and, you know, it doesn't feel really fun when you're, you you don't have anything to look forward to. Like, 
you're not excited about even like what you're doing and it feels like life's just happening to you but you're not like living your life and it, so and if you want to i feel like if you want to get into a place where you are a very um like you are taking ground and you are doing good in life like you're gonna get very busy and like mm -hmm. we've even had seasons you know we walk through sometimes a week and at the end of the week we're like oh my gosh we were we were doing so much with other people that like like where'd the time go yeah and and it feels like we've been living side by side but we haven't had quality time um, and I think that that just that that possibility kind of amplifies when you add in so many different factors like jobs and careers and kids and all of these different things. So, um, I mean, we we even we experience it. I feel like this last week has been so crazy for us. Yeah, we went to Florida, which is like such a huge blessing. Spencer got invited to an event in Florida. So we flew down on a red eye after our youth service that we do. And then. You know, from there, we're connecting with different people. So we were driving like all over and we it's like mm -hmm. it was like a three part trip over four days, which that's a lot to pack in. And even when we come back, Spencer's like, this is going to be a busy week. I'm like, no, busy. don't say that. I, I want to look forward to like what we have coming and feel like there's still time to breathe and like enjoy being home. Yeah. 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 We had a good time. But, you know, when you're out of your rhythm and you you know you're just experiencing something new you're kind of more on the go you're not really sure what's around you and like what to do where to eat like things like that it's crazy it's just it's fun i love to explore but it is different there are yeah there's pros i mean obviously you know we're not over here complaining that like we have oh we have to travel for work but for the things. sake of like busyness like it was a very busy weekend when you're going like to an event and you're expected to be at certain things definitely yeah and i think you know yeah it's it's funny because i feel like we're on the contrary because it's like we come back from a trip where we're doing everything that we don't normally do and eating and blah blah, blah get out of a rhythm and we are like now let's get back to normal like excited to get back to normal and like our chicken and rice and you know like a home cooked dinner and everything oh, i feel and like you make us sound so boring no <laughs> it's just like like there's things that i appreciate of being just so normal and things that we do but on the flip side of it it's like maybe you're you've been doing that for so long that it just feels like oh like the spark or the excitement of life or the excitement with your couple is, is kind of missing. So that's kind of what we're talking about because everybody goes through those, those times eventually. Yeah. And I think, you know, we, when we're talking to some friends and they're like, Oh yeah, we take 60 flights a year. We were like, what? That is crazy. You're doing two trips a month. And for them, I feel like maybe that's more of their routine. And so like, it's refreshing to come yeah. home and like, get into like the same thing every single day yeah but there's like the opposite side of that where like hey i wake someone that was like asking me like what do you eat like tell me how you get like the way you look your skin or whatever and i was like oh actually i do have like the same thing every day like my <laughs> breakfast my lunch my dinner it's always the same and for some people it's like that's that's really all that's happening and you're like oh, i just feel like it's dull like i need to like spice things up mm -hmm. for some people their life is so go, go, go that they like really appreciate their routine. But yeah. I think the first thing that we want to say is if you're feeling that life is dull, get out of your routine. Cause you know, I can tell someone what I'm eating for every single meal, every single day. And it's so predictable. I think that can feel dull for some people. And so you need to like spice it up. Yeah. And it's like, you don't have to, you don't have to go take a flight to Italy. And it, you know, I think it's just, a matter of a lot of small details but you can you can't i mean shoot. <laughs> and, and if you got I the means just love to do that if you got the means and you got the desire absolutely go to italy but you know for those that have a, a schedule that they can't get out of you know it's like well, hey i have my job i don't have that much vacation we have kids they're in school they're in sports there's so much that you know it's just the small things of Okay, if Adrian makes breakfast every morning, maybe I make it, you know, maybe I surprise her and I make it one day and I don't tell her or, you know, one of the craziest things, if I'm not joking, and this is like a kind of a life hack um, in some senses mm -hmm. of the word, but if Adrian's ever having a very bad day and it's like, it, it could feel like the world is falling apart, like truly, if I just bring her Starbucks, it's, it's insane what that <laughs> does for her it's a the and shift. and i've learned it i've learned that like oh wow this actually means a lot to you and six dollars can go a long way you guys <laughs> and i don't yeah 
exposing what you get at Starbucks, six dollar drink. Six fifty five. Um but it it's just things that kind of snap you out of almost like the hypnotic sense of of the same routine in life to be able to pre- appreciate things. Yeah, like just switching up even like the flow, like you're kind of what you're saying. It's like, okay, she's still going to have breakfast, but maybe I make it for her or, you know, we do it together versus, you know, we kind of have our roles of how we do things, but switching up your schedule and your flow can kind of help. Like, I mean, normally it's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to make my meals. I'm going to hang out with Spencer. And like, that's my typical work day, like during the week. Mm -hmm. And that's great. And I love it. Sometimes there's events thrown in there. Actually, normally there's events thrown in there. But that is like what a typical mundane day would look like for me. But there are ways you can switch it up. Um, Like the flow, kind of like what you're saying, doing the same task, maybe in a different way or inviting people to join you. Totally. Like and that's one of the benefits of community Mm -hmm. is, um, you know, it's a sometimes when me and Adrian, when we go out, it's like, oh, do you want to? invite these people you want to bring a friend (laughs) yeah like do you want to invite these people or do you want these people to come and and that always helps too because it's just a newness and it's a freshness and it's fresh conversation absolutely it's just a different perspective on maybe something that they would like to do like if you're you know mondays we go get coffee together and sometimes it's like oh let's invite someone and maybe they have different thoughts about a new place to try or maybe they you know whatever it's fun yeah it's it's such a Good concept uh, to try new things because, I mean, when we think about life in all of its crazy, complex nature, you know, it's like scripture tells us that that God's mercies are new every morning. Like there's a Mm -hmm. newness and there's an excitement about it. And so there is so many things that you can do to spark that newness in your relationship as well. Like think to yourself, what have I not done as small or big? Yeah. And and then just try it and just it, it's not the act but it's what the act actually produces in way of conversation and appreciation in my opinion yeah well like even you it's like okay you do work out but you're starting to run more in your workouts and you're like i want to do a half marathon soon like marathon. I think that'd be fun a marathon i could do i could do a half marathon i could you're right, in you're my right. clothes right now go to a half marathon but that's besides the point besides the point um i would like to say half marathons are very impressive i'm just saying me personally, I'm going to do a marathon before I do a half Well, marathon. I feel like with how much you already kind of run, like, you know, I've been running a lot. Do it. Yes. I'm not Versus saying I like haven't people run. people training up to that. Like you've kind of already kind of hit that marker. A bit. I technically am training. Yeah. We're digressing. I just want to, I understand that the half marathons are great. I'm just saying I didn't want to come off as douchey, but I think I already have. So let's move on. <laughs> you exposed yourself. <laughs> but you know, Spencer wants to do a marathon. Yeah. So that's something new that he's doing that kind of still fits within his routine something new that he can talk about or maybe bond with different people over Mm -hmm. invites people to do the race with him which i know that you're you know looking for people to run with um if you're in the pierce county area (laughs) let's do a run group or you guys kind of have a run group but you know yeah mixing it up finding new things to do in and that's that's a very you know very practical way because sometimes it's not that deep Mm -hmm. you know i think like I'm reading. Oh, Adrian is reading and it's a big deal. We actually flew back today when we're filming today. And you're reading what book? And I, uh, it's called beach house by Emily Henry. And I read it almost the whole flight. I have a hundred pages left and I'm really proud because I don't really read, but I was like, okay, I don't have anything to do. I'm not really going to focus on work. I feel like it's kind of like vacation mode still. So I'm going to do something for fun. And I told Spencer, are you proud of me? And then I also was like, and guess what? I cried twice while reading it, which is like, score. that's new for me. I didn't know books could make you feel. I know that's silly, (laughs) but if you don't read and you don't think you enjoy it and all of a sudden like you're experiencing new emotions, like that's really cool. So, you know, something fun to talk about with people. My sister read the book, so now we can talk about the plot line. And Mm -hmm. yeah, it's nothing monumental. We're not planning some crazy excursion but we are doing new things to switch it up so that you know i feel like there's just something new and exciting to experience yeah and it's not that like it doesn't have to be that deep of oh we're having issues because things are dull and it's boring and it's like oh what's wrong it's like a deep-seated maybe it's just like you guys just need to try something new like don't freak out don't go armageddon 
mm-hmm. and just just try some new things and see if that sparks something yeah well even kind of like you're saying um if you feel like life is getting dull don't blame your spouse for your life being dull yes i feel like that's yeah. like our second point i think yeah that yeah don't blame your spouse um the blame game is a very dangerous road and it's so dangerous because it's so easy. Well, I think, you know, not say that people, like we say it takes two, you know, they may not be the only person at fault. Ex- expect that you could have some ownership as mm-hmm. well. And I think people are also maybe more like, you know, disarmed and, willing to like hear your advice and you're like hey it's not just you it's me too like let's do this together i feel like life is getting a little bit dull i think we can spice things up or like hey here's what i've been trying like what do you think we should do maybe like opening it up as a question versus like you do this you are this what do you think we should do here's here's some things that i've been implementing or things i've been thinking about or things i think we should do i think it's a conversation versus just like making statements I actually heard something really good. I don't know if I said this before, but um, when you're having a conversation, I ask more questions than making statements. Mm -hmm. I feel like that leads to a healthier conversation overall, leads people to be more self-reflective, especially in confrontational conversations. Yeah. And I think asking questions, kind of what you said, disarms on Mm -hmm. a level. Um, Because the, the reality of a relationship is if you want to look for a fault in the person that you are with, you will be able to find them because we're all at fault. <laughs> we're yeah. all imperfect. Nobody, nobody's perfect. Like we have our things that we suck at that we don't do as much as we should. And in a relationship, if you are seeking that out, you will find it. You're yeah. never going to find the perfect person. So it's, it's a matter of what are you willing to actually focus your mind on? And I think that's why scripture is so clear with honor and submission and respect and Mm -hmm. you guys being one in a team because if not you guys it's so easy to tear each other apart especially in turmoil Mm -hmm. because if i got a piece of paper and you got a piece of paper and it's like hey write down five faults you know we'd be able to come up with them because we know each other the best yeah and and in a aspect of love that's so important is it's sacrificial and it's understanding that okay not and giving credit and giving the benefit of the doubt to say like, hey, we are in this together mm-hmm. and I'm going to focus on the good. And by focusing on good, you actually champion somebody to become the better version of themselves. Yeah. When I think about honor, I think in respect, I'm thinking about like, OK, for instance, like my boss, like how do I communicate with them? Am I as loose with my words or as critical with my language as I am with someone that I'm really close to? I mm-hmm. think it's really easy when you're going through a difficult season to, I don't know, I think just like spill your feelings in an unhealthy way because you just feel so comfortable with someone and it's probably not the healthiest outlet. So like if you wouldn't talk to like your boss, I mean, obviously the dynamic's a little bit different, but if you wouldn't say that kind of thing to someone else, why are you trying to hurt the person that you're closest to by blaming them? Just, I think that shifts to like, you know, being solution oriented. Mm -hmm. So when you feel like things are dull, like don't blame your spouse, but then like, what are you doing to like find a solution? Yeah. Solution oriented is, I think that's, that's very, and it's, but it's so hard to do sometimes, you know, when, when you're just so frustrated and you look at your, like somebody and they could be doing more. And I think, honestly, I do think an element of being in a healthy relationship is really giving the other person the benefit of the doubt. And a little bit of slack sometimes Mm -hmm. that it's like, hey, just because they are missing the mark, like, yes, that's we're not excusing their behavior. But what do we have to do in order to get to a place where they're good and you're good and we're good instead of this is your issue? Fix it. So we need to find a solution. Do you think that in the process of finding a solution that we need to like point out the source or like? How do you think is the, is that even necessary to move forward? Does that mean like saying that they're the source of the problem? Like, what does that look like? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, I, I just, 
I don't, I mean, I think it, it probably depends case to case. I mean, I think like, obviously if there's crazy things that are happening, like an extra marital affairs, sexual sin, I think that stuff is like, in my opinion, that has to be dealt with like a hammer. Mm -hmm. Like you have to, you have to get to the root of it and you have to get to the cause of it. And you have to sacrifice some of that, um, like, uh, like conversational grace in that because mm -hmm. that's a solution. But when we're talking about like dull, a dull season, I think that's another, that's an area that I just think it's so nuanced mm -hmm. and a lot of factors could be playing into it. Yeah. So in those situations, I think it's... It's not usually a singular source. It's the reason for you to be in that situation. Totally. Yes. Yeah. I think and it's complicated. Still, when you talk about like infidelity, which is awful, and obviously like if the person's committing it, like yes, they have a strong part to play, but like what pushed them to that infidelity or what pushed mm -hmm. them to like look at pornography like is it because they feel neglected is it because like i'm not saying that it's your fault either totally. but let's talk about the actual source not, yes. not the the conflict but the source of that conflict and then work on the solution mm -hmm. which doesn't mean that it's an individual i think it's more of like a circumstance and so i think separating a circumstance from a person yep. to find a solution is probably what i would say is the best thing to do yeah, and that that requires a lot of humility mm -hmm. to be able to say like, "Hey, you broke my heart. You did this, but I if if we are looking at a marriage as one, you have to peel back that layer of of pride and say, "Okay, like you're saying, how did we get here?" Yeah. And it's like, "Oh, well, our boundaries or our intimacy was off or we didn't communicate as much, and here's how I played into that." Again, we're not saying any blame is shifted, mm -hmm. but you do have to go back and see what, you know, what the root cause was. But that's like all of it is solution oriented. Yeah. But it's hard. It's so much harder because I think sometimes in conflict, it's like I just think that if if you're playing the card of, hey, this is on you, fix it or we're done. It's almost like you want them to not fix it so you can be done. But I think like the Olympics are on right now. And I, when I'm thinking about being solution oriented, like you're on a team. So it's not really like, you know, if you don't do this, I'm out. Like you're on a team. So if like, you know, they stole the ball in the last play, like, hey, where was the lack in communication? Like, yeah. where was the misunderstanding in that play that caused them to steal the ball? You know, I'm thinking of basketball because we just watched that. Yeah. So. Or like, hey. Dang, you made a mistake, but I like, let's talk about like, we also watch gymnastics. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if my teammate makes a mistake, scores a low score, I have to score higher now, but we're on the team. So mm -hmm. I am going to carry that responsibility and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to try my very best to, to compensate for that. But that's why I think we talk about like people that are not just team Adrian, not just team Spencer, but our team Spadrian, yes. you know, yes. team us. We, we go by Spadrian. <laughs> Um, so when you're thinking like, if you don't do this, I'm out, then you're not thinking that you're a team. And I think also that could be the source of your issue. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, it's not me and you, it's us. And, yeah. and it's not, if you, if you don't figure this out, Ultimatums I'm out. are not necessarily the healthiest when it comes no, to. No, it's, it's, if we can't figure this out, then we're not going to make it. And yeah. I think that's the difference. And I think when you even just make those like minor shifts in your language. Yeah. Like I've even just talked about this with myself, something totally different and not really to you necessarily, but like I need to take my thoughts captive. I need to be careful with my words because I think it's not a big deal because I'm just sharing my perspective. But if I'm trying to shift my perspective, it does matter what I say. Cause like that goes, you know, in one ear, it goes like you're speaking out of the overflow of your heart. And if mm -hmm. I'm trying to change my heart posture, I have to change the way that I'm thinking. I have to change the way that I'm speaking. And so if you're not thinking in a team mindset, you need to change your verbiage. Yeah. And ultimately, hopefully, that will change your heart as well. Totally. It all starts with that. Um, okay, so we talked about not blaming your spouse. We talked about uh, getting out of routine. And the third one is uh, goals and intentionality. Yeah, I think that's really important when you have something to look forward to. Um, it can take that dullness out of life. And like we said, it doesn't have to be anything monumental, but I think even just being intentional with each other, like Spencer said, Adrian's having a rough day. I know that <laughs> 655 is going to go a long way. It does. <laughs> you told it that does go a long way. Earlier. I have to tell on myself. So, uh, I don't know why it's embarrassing, but like, I'm, I'm always afraid of looking like I'm cheap. 
and <laughs> Spencer sometimes doesn't let me do that either. <laughs> like our bags were late today. And I was like, we can go get a $25 voucher. And he goes, Adrian, it is not that important. I was like, it's $25. And he goes, exactly. We're not wasting our time. Yeah, we just traveled for like, so like 12 hours that day. Yeah, so I was with your sisters on a trip. And we went through the drive through It's not my normal Starbucks, so I felt safe asking it so they didn't judge me every day when I see them going forward. But I normally get two shots in a three-shot drink. Yeah. And I'm like, they always charge you extra. And we're totally derailing, but whatever. No, I'm with you on this, um, though. I know what you're going to say. They always charge you extra for a shot. Yeah. And I'm like, if I get one less, do I get a discount? Yeah, take the take it away. So you're charging I your first asked, one, so. and they said no. That is, that's stupid. I know. That's thievery. Like, I don't ask for anything special like or extra, you know? Like, yeah. it should be charged. I just, I get a double brown sugar oat milk shake and espresso. It comes with three shots. I asked for two. I'm like, hey, can I get a discount? She's like, oh, no, we don't do that here. We're Starbucks. And I was like. She said we're Starbucks? You're like, yeah, she is not repping her company well. That's what I've always thought that too. Every time I order your drink, I'm always like, this comes with three shots and it's six fifty five. If I take out one of those shots that you charge like a dollar or something for. It's 80 cents. 80 cents. You should discount it. I know. I don't know how we got here, but we are Anyways, here. I just, I said your 655 can go a long way. I'm like, oh, it yes. should be less. It should but be less. But anyways. Um, but yeah, you know, in this, like this idea of goals and intentionality, I think it's vision is everywhere in the Bible. Like it's literally everywhere in scripture of mm -hmm. us having vision for our lives, God giving us vision, um, all prophets and characters, of the old Testament, new Testament got visions. And, and that's important because where are you, like, where are you headed? Like, without where are you vision, walking people to perish? Yeah. Right? Without vision, the people perish. And so it, likewise in a marriage, you guys have to know where you're going, where you're headed, progress metrics, not to say that it's mm -hmm. not going to be difficult, but it's important to have that, to know at least that you're going somewhere. I, yeah. I hate, we talked about, I started running. I hate running on a treadmill. It's the worst. Yeah. Because I'm like, it feels like I've ran 10 miles and I look down and I haven't run, ran anything close to that. Whereas if I'm on a trail, like I'm looking ahead and I'm like, oh, you know what? All right, let's, let's keep pushing until I hit that tree. And then I hit the tree and then I'm like, all mm -hmm. right, let's do it. And it's, it's so much easier to actually see progress in your life versus just running in the same spot. It, you get exhausted so much faster. It actually makes me think a lot of the story of Moses leading the people out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they knew they were going to the promised land, but they didn't really know where they were going. They just knew they were kind of like following. But to them, they felt like there was no end in sight. They didn't really know where totally. they were going. They were just kind of like, you know, a whole nation is kind of on the move. Mm -hmm. And obviously you see what happens like they start to build like idols and they start to grumble about food and water and whatever even though god totally provided everything they needed i think that they didn't get the vision of where they were going yeah. and that's what caused you know so much turmoil within the people along the way um so you do need to know where you're going you need to be intentional in yeah finances you will always fight about finances if you guys aren't on the same page and know the goal is it's like mm -hmm. and, and here's the thing goals a goal is not, hey, we're cutting back on spending. Yeah, like like what I said, though, with the people, like you have to know where you're going. So yes. Like we're saving this much money. We're going to do it in this amount of time. We're this only giving we're do it. this amount of money every week to this. Mm -hmm. We're only spending this on. So it, like it's metrics. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's measurement. How do you expect to accomplish something if you don't actually have measurements for it? And, and you know, we also talked a little bit, you know, about the story of Nehemiah. And uh, Nehemiah was called by God to go back to Jerus Jerusalem after uh, it was captured and torn down by Babylon. And and Nehemiah rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem. And <clears throat> it was crazy because I, it's it's like, I just feel like, you know, this spirit of ba Babylon has followed our world to today. It's literally just a spirit of evil. It's a spirit that tears down. It's a spirit that corrupts. And uh, in marriages, I think that sometimes we are called to rebuild because we have allowed a spirit of Babylon into our marriages that has mm -hmm. caused evil and havoc. And, and so what are the next steps? God gives vision to what rebuild the wall. Yeah. And, and Nehemiah does it in, you know, 50 something days, which is insane. And, but it, it's just a matter of like, 
it's so spiritual in nature when we read it, right? It's mm-hmm. like, wow, this was the identity of Israel and it's so cool to read the story. And it's like, but to Nehemiah, it, they got, they were just throwing stones on a wall. Like it's, it, that's, it's hard labor. Like it's not yeah. sexy and it's, it's not complicated. It's very <laughs> simple. Like yeah. God is like, Hey, just go rebuild the wall. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just took daily practice and discipline and hard work, but they had a vision for yeah. it. They were obedient. They were intentional. It was a priority. He yes. Wait to do it. He, you know, went and submitted his request and got to take his people with him i your relationship needs to be a priority you need to be intentional you need to you know you need to show what you're also expecting in return yeah and i i feel like you know i just i just feel like posing the question you know if you feel like your marriage isn't in a place where you want it to be it might seem like this this distant hopeless endeavor to get to a place where you're like wow we are in love and we're on the same page but like what would it look like if you spent 52 days you know how long they took to rebuild the wall Mm. 52 days really just rebuilding the wall nothing sexy nothing like not expecting anything big it can be (laughs) (laughs) it can't okay it can't no but Yes, it can be. I, I just, <laughs> He's so serious. I was, I was, I was oh, going yeah. somewhere with that. Keep going, preacher. Keep going. Um, but what would it look like, you know, if, yeah. if you just worried about taking the stones and building back the wall to get back your identity as and a being married couple and being consistent? Which I think is like the point of it. You yes. Know? Like for 52 days, they didn't stop working till it was done. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't be like, oh, try for a couple of days and like, oh, I'm not seeing results. I'm just going to quit. Yeah, it, it, it's it's so spiritual and it's so practical. But yeah. like practical things are very spiritual in nature because it's what God calls us to do. Mm-hmm. Like he literally told Nehemiah, rebuild the wall. It was, so, it was so simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Like rebuild a marriage takes, you know, just focus on it and day by day grind it out it's probably not going to be super awesome every day yeah like nehemiah probably wasn't stoked to go sling around having some to rocks. wash all the bricks too right wash the them same all story? yep everything had so- it's on tedious it. you have to wash everything before the mortar can actually stick to it so mm-hmm. can't imagine that was super enjoyable yeah but that's what was required of them so you know if you're in a spot where you know relationally it's a little iffy then Ask yourself what is required of you to get back and get it back. There's a verse that says hard work is, you know, obviously difficult in the moment, but you're going to reap a harvest going forward. Mm -hmm. So knowing, you know, hard work is hard. (laughs) Hence (laughs) the title. Absolutely. It is going to be difficult, but ultimately, if you're believing in a certain result, it's going to be worth the work. Yeah. And like even us, we've been in like, I think what we uh, relate to most is like moments in times of financial strain in our marriage. And there's times where it was like, like we had this vision in front of us and we knew we were going to get to a place that was different than what we were at. But it was like a daily, it was a daily grind of like. We kind of laugh at it now like. That was kind of intense. No, it was intense. That was pretty strange. That was pretty limited. It was limited. It was <laughs> limited is a generous word. It was pretty strict. Um, I remember we showed our friends our budget one time and they were like, ooh, that's it? <laughs> you know? I mean, well, we have an amazing house and I feel like that was like the biggest part of it. But they were like. But again, we oh, knew my. going into it, it's like we chose to be things. Mm-hmm. Like we chose and we had a vision in front of us. We chose, we chose to, to be, be house poor. Yeah, because we knew that having a house as a property was really an key investment. in investment in the beginning, and we sacrificed because of that. Um, we sacrificed because of me, because of different things that we felt like God was calling me to do. And in those seasons, it was like, man, this is really tough, and it was a grind. But like, eventually, we got to a point where we 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 looked and we're like, oh wow, we're we're past that, mm-hmm. and it, you know, and it's crazy because you go through that and it strengthens you. Yeah. As a couple. So anyways, that is uh, all I have to say about that. <laughs> yeah, I think when you can come out on the other side, you can look back at 
hard seasons you've gone through together and think we can do this yeah. you know we could do this again we've done it before we can do it again god is faithful you know yeah so um, I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope that if you're in, in one of these seasons where maybe it feels a little dull, you can apply any of these uh, pieces of advice that we have and, and just journey through it together. Um, we love you guys and we are prayerful for all you listening, our two crew. We're thankful that you are continuing to follow along. Again, if you haven't yet, make sure that you guys subscribe. Make sure that you guys like the video. Let us know your favorite part and leave a comment because we might... Uh, read it out loud one of and these we'll times. we'll do usernames next time. Usernames next yeah. time, yeah. And so we love you and we're thankful for all of you. We will see you next time on It Takes Two.